Now, anytime we're going to a lake where we're going to target multi-species, I want multi-species lures. And in my mind, there's very few lures that are more multi-species than a jerkbait. The other thing to keep in mind about the jerkbait is it will provoke fish that aren't necessarily in a good mood. And that's important because when we got to Elkhead Reservoir in fall, the water was falling and uh, the fish weren't in a great mood. We figured out right away that they weren't on a, on a heavy chow. Um, the, the bite wasn't hot and heavy. And so I wanted to get the jerkbait bait out and, and knowing that if I got it in front of a large mouth, a small mouth, or a pike, we had a really good shot at getting one of those three to bite. And so that was really important. So we started it off with the little cutter jerk baits. We threw a couple different ones that day. These are cutter jerk baits. This is a cutter 90. This is a cutter 110. We threw a couple of different ones that day. It wasn't about that specific jerk bait. It, that will change with, this, with the weather, the light conditions, water color, and all that. It was more about where we threw the jerk baits that was, was going to dictate what, uh, whether or not we could uh, catch various species on them. And so because I wanted to catch largemouth and pike, we stayed away from the steeper banks on the lake. And the reason is it comes down to what the, the fish prefer. The smallmouth love the relation immediately to the river channel. They love the steeper banks, like the outside bends of the river channel, things like that. When we did decide to see if we could catch a good sized smallmouth, it took me about 15 minutes to get one to eat the cutter jerkbait on an outside swing in the main river channel there. And that outside swing is steep and deep with a bunch of broken rock on it. And right away I was able to produce a big smallmouth. All right. And he's not real happy right now. <laughs> No, I think it's a big small. Yeah, I'm not totally sure. I didn't get a good look at him. Oh, it's a monster smallmouth. All right, here we go. And we're gonna try to net this one too. You guys, are, if you're a fan, you know netting ain't my strength, but that's a big, lively smallmouth, and we'd like to see that one. All right, buddy. And we'll just keep throwing this jerk bait. That's a big old smallmouth. Come here, fish. Look at that thing, guys. <laughs> you guys, that's a, if you need an excuse to throw a jerk bait, I got you one right here. Let me pull these out of here. First thing, let me get this guy off of this net here. That's a big old smallie, guys, in case you're curious. Get this one out of the top of his head. Guys, that, uh, that's why we talk about smallmouth removals not being necessarily evil. That is a big, thick, look at this thing. That's a big old honking smallmouth. And once again, guys, I think we've caught one worthy of a still photo. So we're going to get one more just because. <laughs> Incidentally, I could throw the jerk baits on the flatter banks that we chose to focus on for both largemouth and pike. Uh, both of those banks with wood cover on them because, again, both species like the cover. Uh, we were also able to use the jerk bait there. Now you have to be a little bit more careful because it will snag in the, in the bushes and things like that. So you gotta be careful with that, but it's still a very effective tool. And we caught both largemouth and pike on the jerk bait in that scenario. It really doesn't matter where I'm going. If there's largemouth and pike in there, unless there's too much vegetation to work a jerk bait, it's always gonna be on my radar. All right, there we go. And I think that's probably another pike. Right here when the bank got flat again, camera guy and I were just talking about, that might be a bass actually, he's staying down. Uh, that's a large mouth. Look at that large mouth, guys. We were just talking about we needed the flat bank and I'm gonna net him because he's got a whole face full of treble hooks here. So we're gonna bring him around over here. That's a nice large mouth, dudes. That right there is why I don't gripe when they take small mouth out of this lake because I know that pole oh, stay pin baby stay pin baby i will take him <laughs> look at that fish guys look at the girth before i even get him out of here ouch there's a treble hook look at the girth on this fish guys yeah that's a quality fish and when i talked to this sec second in command for colorado state hatcheries He's like, man, yeah, we're taking a lot of smallmouth out of there, but we put 22,000 catchable size largemouth in a whole pile of sub catchables. And guys, that is a solid largemouth right there. I mean, 
Uh, they could take all the small mouth out of here they want. They keep dumping those in here and he just trashed that same jerk bait we're catching everything else on. How cool is that? Let's get a quick still. What do you guys think? We need a still, don't you? We'll put him in the water and let the camera guy get ready. The rod that I'll throw the jerk bait on these days and it's something that I've done for a very long time. I've shown you this guy's a lot, so I'll be quick. Six foot eight, medium power, extra fast action. Again, the veracity for the same reason. The jerk bait is a borderline violent technique. I'm snapping hard on the bait. The hook sets are aggressive. The bait's a lot of times paused out when the fish hits it. Uh, I like to have a very durable rod that responds to shock well, and the veracity does that. Also got excellent balance. Again, with the rocket, if for the same reason, this is a seven to one gear ratio. Uh, again, very fast, recovers line in a hurry, big, big drag surface on it. Fantastic all around combo for working jerk baits. So I throw it with 15 pound X9 braid, Berkeley X9 braid, and the short 30, 40, or 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. All right, guys, whatever I got now is not happy about being caught. And I got him on this jerk bait, and uh, it almost has to be a big old pike. It's big. Yeah, it's a big old monster pike. Look at that thing, guys. And he just choked that cutter jerk bait. This is gonna be a handful. <laughs> so I've got the boat. Look at the size of that pike, dude. That is a thick pike right there. Put the power poles down so we can hold the boat here. And I'm just gonna let him get tired for a second because that thing is thick. And you can see that I got a 30 pound, trying 100% Prospect fluorocarbon leader right there. And I'm not sure if he's gonna stay pinned. He's got the front hook right in the corner of the mouth. And uh, his camera pans over, you can see we've got this rocky point the boat's sitting on right here. And I ran it down, this is the third cast on that point. I ran a couple different angles by there. And the, the third one, he got it. Hey. Okay. Now we're going to see how graceful I can be with him. And I think with him being a pike and being as graceful as I can. Easy. Come on back over here, buddy. And this is my regular smallmouth bass rod. Come here, buddy. Uh -huh. That's how you do it. Ugh. And there, guys is one big fat elk head bike. And if you wonder why we throw jerk baits, that's why guys, I mean, the water temperatures dropped six degrees in four days. Um, water level has dropped, it's dropping like eight inches a day. And uh, we just go work around and caught that big guy. So we'll get a quick still and get him let go.